Hey everybody, I'm Josh O'Leary. Welcome to Popcorn Perspective. Here on this show, we dive into a film that I have never seen before. And I give you my ranking and my review on it. And uh, today we're gonna be looking at 1990, you could call it a classic, Frankenhooker. All right, so our movie starts off with a man named Jeffrey. This guy is a scientist of sorts. Uh, he's putting a brain and an eyeball together in his kitchen. This movie starts off wild from the start. A woman comes into the kitchen while Jeffrey's working on his brain eyeball and uh, she asks him to pass the ketchup so she can go join the friends and family that are outside in their yard for uh, some little cookout get together thing they're having. There is an attractive blonde woman at this cookout. Her name's Elizabeth. Uh, she's talking to people at the cookout about how she's worried she's too fat. She's worried she's being judged. She's not fat at all, by the way. This woman, not fat at all. She's worried she's being judged and uh, says that her husband, who is the guy inside working on eyeball brain, Jeffrey, her husband, Jeffrey, stapled her stomach together and uh, her friends are like, hey, wait, don't you have to be a surgeon to do that? And she's like, oh, Jeffrey, you know, Jeffrey, he just, he's an engineer, but he knows what he's doing. Yeah, like Jeffrey's a, an electrical engineer. He's not even a surgeon of any sorts. He's apparently been kicked out of metal, medical schools. It turns out that this cookout is for uh, the in-laws of Jeffrey. This is uh, Elizabeth is the daughter of the parents there. And Jeffrey is... Uh, their son-in-law, as uh, it seems that they are going to be getting married, or I'm not sure if they're already married. I don't, that I don't know. But at this cookout, uh, Jeffrey has gotten his father-in-law a very special gift. And this special gift is a remote controlled lawnmower. And while demonstrating how the lawnmower works, Jeffrey's not even paying attention to any of this. Uh, the, Elizabeth's like, hey, I'm going to show you how this lawnmower works. And she grabs the remote control, and this thing just goes off the fritz, runs her over, blood goes everywhere, splattered everywhere, all the garden gnomes covered in blood, and that's when we get our title card. And during these uh, opening credits, after the title card, uh, they're, they're blueprints showing uh, Jeffrey mapping out his plans to build Elizabeth a new body. Jeffrey's gone to extreme lengths. He's printed out pictures of her head, and uh, he's putting them over his blueprints. He's kissing on these photos. He dearly misses Elizabeth. Jeffrey keeps a tape of the news report from his wife's accident and he watches it. And this news report is pretty funny. This is where I start to pick up. I'm surprised I didn't start to pick up when the remote control lawnmower came in. But once he watched this news segment, I was like, oh, this is, this is a horror comedy. This is funny. Jeffrey's mom comes into the room. We haven't seen Jeffrey's mom yet, but his mom comes into the room because, you know, he's just sitting around depressed drawing these blueprints up for a new body for Elizabeth. So she comes in to cheer up her son and he's not having any of it. He's like, I don't want any of it. She even offers him some egg salad and he turns it down. He turned down some, some nice egg salad. Instead, Jeffrey uh, orders some pizza and has a nice candlelit dinner with the uh, head of Elizabeth. He grabs the head of Elizabeth out of a, I guess, some sort of cryogenic freezer that he has uh, in, his, in his shed here where he's working. And he has a nice candlelit pizza dinner with Elizabeth. They're enjoying their dinner and Jeffrey uh, shows the dead head of Elizabeth some mock-ups of what she would look like with her new body. So now we're back. Um, now we're back to Jeff 
uh, in his house thinking of what to do. And the only way he can think of what to do is for some reason he takes a drill, a power drill, and he starts drilling it into his head just uh, on his own will. Just I'm just gonna drill this drill bit into my head. And this is what gives him the idea to be like, oh, you know what, I need body parts. The only way I'm gonna be able to do this is with street sex workers. Jeff drives into the city and meets two girls. He flashes his cash and uh, they take him to go meet their pimp whose name is Zaro. Now to meet Zaro, they gotta make their way through some uh, pretty dingy areas and they find their way into a nice little bathroom filled with crackheads and people fighting and whatnot. And that's where, Z that's where Zaro hangs out. And uh, Jeffrey walks up to Zaro and says, listen, I need some girls. I need a lot of girls. And I'd also like some crack, please. Zaro sells Jeffrey the crack, of course, and he's he's gonna take the crack back home. And here's, here's where you're gonna be like, what, what in the world? Jeffrey has the brilliant, brilliant idea to take this crack. And since he's so good at science, he's gonna manipulate this crack. He's gonna go a little Walter White here and he's gonna invent super crack. That's right, super crack. The reason he's inventing this super crack is because he hopes that when he gets the sex workers to his place, he can get them to smoke it and it will kill them quicker. But it's okay to him because they, they'll be enjoying it. The drill bit that he keeps drilling into his head, it's convincing him of all of this. Jeff then needs to test his super crack on a guinea pig. And uh, the super crack works, works very well. This guinea pig explodes almost instantly. So Zaro, he gets Jeff his, uh, his girls he wants. He gets like 20 girls and uh, they meet up with him and he's measuring their body parts and they're like having a nice little, you know, late eighties, early nineties montage of Jeff measuring these girls' body parts. You know, he's magnifying nipples and stuff with his magnifying glass. Very funny, very funny sequence. Jeffrey's having a problem choosing one of the girls. He, he's like, I just can't choose one. You've all got different parts that I want. None of these girls understanding what he's really saying. And uh, in the meanwhile, Zaro is showing up. He's downstairs uh, saying, Jeffrey needs to hur up, hurry up and pick. I didn't say you could have all 20 of these girls. He needs to hurry up. That's when upstairs, one of the uh, sex workers finds Jeffrey's bag of super crack and says, hey, we're gonna smoke this super crack. And this super crack's ridiculous. These rocks are ridiculous. They are huge. There is a massive amount of boobs in this uh, scene. A lot of boobs out. Uh, there's two girls at one point making out and Jeffrey is disgusted by this. He's like, no, no, that's wrong. <laughs> it's like, it's just, what, that's wrong? <laughs> that That's what's wrong? <laughs> While this party's going on, Zaro's uh, patiently waiting downstairs, but his patience soon runs thin as he heads upstairs to start knocking on the door. This is when the uh, first prostitute starts to react bad to the super crack. She starts to get hot and sweaty. Oh, it's so hot in here. And then she explodes. And these aren't, this isn't like a body just spontaneously combusting. This is like electronic, like explosion. There's like like wires and I don't know how the super crack is doing this, but that's what it does. Pretty amazing. So the first girl explodes and then there's two, three, four, five more girls after her just exploding. And after, after everyone, everyone explodes. Every, after everyone explodes, Zaro busts in through the door finally. But as soon as he busts in through the door, he gets bonked in the head with uh, one of the prostitutes heads flying off. <laughs> It's pretty funny. Now, Jeffrey, Jeffrey's a good guy. You know, with Zara knocked out, he, he goes around and he apologizes to all the exploding body parts that are laying around the room. He goes around and apologizes and says, hey, listen, don't worry, I'm gonna fix all of you. I'll put you all back together somehow. I'm gonna put uh, your, your body parts into a bag. I'm gonna take them back with me to New Jersey. We'll get you fixed up. Jeffrey takes the body parts back to his lab and he starts construction on Elizabeth's new body. And he's getting these body parts nice and ready. He's even scrubbing the corns and bunions off the feet of uh, these dead prostitutes with Elizabeth's head being the final touch. When Jeffrey is done assembling Elizabeth, he uh, 
straps her down, very Frankenstein style, Frankenhooker, Frankenstein, raises her up into the air. She goes up into the air and uh, he's gonna try to Ben Franklin key lightning strike her up there. And it works, it works because he waited for the perfect storm and lightning has struck Elizabeth, but the lightning has also come down and uh, sh somehow short circuited and uh, attacked the cryogenic freezer that is containing all the other unused body parts that Jeffrey has. Now, when Jeffrey wheels Elizabeth back, back down from being struck by lightning, she's already standing up. She went up laying down, she came back down standing up. Elizabeth's uh, first thing she says to Jeffrey is uh, she asks him for some money. Jeffrey says, what, I don't have any money. And she immediately backhands Jeffrey and leaves the scene. I think now at this point, we can no longer, she is not Elizabeth, she is the Frankenhooker. Frankenhooker makes her way to the to the local subway and uh, Jeff awakes and then, uh, you know, runs after her saying, I, I gotta find her. Frankenhooker is uh, filled uh, with lines from uh, the dead prostitutes. Any lines uh, the sex workers may have said earlier in the film, that's all that Frankenhooker is able to say. And uh, she's riding on the subway, freaking everybody out. She gets off the subway and finds some, some sad soul, some sad little short stubby soul who uh, is looking for a good time. And she takes this sad little stubby soul back to Zaro's area of town and says, hey, we're gonna have a good time right here. They find a room, she gets on top of him. It starts getting hot and heavy. And then this dude explodes. This dude explodes, just like the prostitutes did earlier in the film. This dude explodes. Uh, she's holding his head <laughs> afterwards and he still thinks it was a great time. All the meanwhile, Jeffrey's been asking everybody in town if they've seen his purple girlfriend, his purple girlfriend. Frankenhooker then, she makes her way to a bar and then spot, she spots a bowl of pretzels and she's really into this bowl of pretzels. Like, I don't know what that, that deal was about, but she, she fucking loves pretzels. Zaro, he's also at this bar. He's also lingering around at this bar and he overhears this guy talking to Frankenhooker and Frankenhooker's replying with only the lines said by Zaro's former sex workers. Uh, he notices this, picks up on it. And uh, the guy that Frankenhooker's talking to at the bar, he's like, yeah, let me go down on you, baby. And she's like, yeah. And this guy goes down. And uh, while he's down there, he explodes, sending the bar into a frenzy. Zaro notices that, uh, Frank and well, during the frenzy, all this is going on. Zaro notices that that she's got the same tattoo that he gives, that he brands all his sex workers with. That uh, this woman's got the same tattoo. He's like, "Where'd you get that?" Of course, Frank and Hooker is not going to answer Zaro properly here, and he gets pissed off and backhands her. And as he does this, her head just like flops backwards, just completely flops off her body, and electric sparks start shooting out of her neck. And that's perfect timing because Jeffrey is now gonna show up, reattach her head, lean it back up and say, let's get the hell out of here. So Jeffrey escorted her out of this building. They've escaped uh, Zaro. They've escaped uh, this, this crazy mess. He's gonna take her back and he's gonna fix her. He puts bolts in her neck, completing the Frankenstein look. And as soon as these bolts are in her neck, she remembers everything. She somehow remembers everything. He like, put, he put the bolts in her neck and he electrocuted her again. She remembers everything now. She's Elizabeth again. She's no longer Frankenhooker. She's Elizabeth again. She's like, what are you talking about? The only problem is, is that when they left the, uh, the party from before, the club from before, they left Zaro alive. And Zaro uh, followed them back. He's sneaking up behind Jeffrey while Jeffrey's talking to Elizabeth here. Um, and he chops Jeffrey's head off with a big knife out of nowhere. Zaro then notices uh, Elizabeth. He says, hey, listen, I lost all my girls. Uh, you're coming back with me. Come on, let's go. Why don't you smoke a little crack first? Why don't you smoke a little crack first? And she's like, no, 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 I want no part of this. Get out of here, man. And that's when the electrocuted cryogenic freezer that Jeffrey has uh, starts to starts to shake, starts to go crazy. Then the cryogenic freezer erupts in all this purple liquid and these gross body part monsters, all these body parts that have somehow just formed together inside of that freezer. All these gross body part monsters start to attack Zaro. 
Zaro gets taken down fairly quickly too, man. He even gives one of them a big old kiss on the lips. These monsters are great. They look awesome. I wish they would have been in more of the movie. Uh, they are hideous little creatures and they pull Zaro back into the uh, freezer with them and uh, have, have, they're gonna have their way with Zaro. Uh, they also don't, they also notice the bag of crack on the ground and they're like, oh, we'll take that too. We're gonna take this in with us as well. Elizabeth then walks over and picks up Jeffrey's decapitated head. And then we shift scenes I guess, to a little bit later on. And Jeffrey is not dead, he's coming too. And you see him like this, like this. You see his head just like this. And then when they zoom out, he's now got a woman's body. That's right. He's now got a woman's body because his serum to bring people back to life only works on female bodies. So now Jeffrey is shocked and uh, in horror uh, that he now has a great pair of tits. That's the end of Frankenhooker. That's the end. That's the end of the movie. And you know what? I I liked this movie. I thought this movie, I liked it a lot. More, I would say probably more than the, the last three movies I watched to start this Popcorn Perspective series. I think that this movie was a lot of fun. It was ridiculous. It was absolutely ridiculous. A little bit taboo, but I enjoyed it, man. It, it made, had me laughing throughout. I thought it was absolutely zany in all the right ways. And uh, the acting wasn't great. It's not supposed to be. Um, some of the practical effects, really, really good. Like I said, I wish I would have saw more of the the monsters in this movie. I wish I would have saw more of the, the body part monsters that come out of the cryogenic freezer. But uh, we, we only got that at the end. But still, uh, I thought this was fun. Uh, some of the effects were pretty bad, like how her neck was stitched on, clearly just painted uh, stitches here. Just not not very good, not very well done. Uh, once the bolts go in the neck though, the ending of the movie really ramps up. The movie's, the movie's ridiculous and it's a fun watch, dude. It's the most fun I think I've had watching any of the movies that I've watched uh, so far for this, for this series. But let's see, what would I give it? What's the rating? Hmm. You need bolts in your neck. You need two bolts in your neck. Uh, and I'm going to give this, if, we're, if you get two bolts in your neck for Frankenstein, so you get like, you, I would give you four Frankensteins. I give it eight bolts. Eight out of ten bolts for Frankenhooker. That's right. That's the, it's the highest rated movie I've reviewed so far. And that's it. I think you should check it out. I mean, it's uh, you can stream it for free on like Pluto or Tubi or something like that. It's on one of them streaming services. It's completely free. Check it. Check this movie out. It's very funny. And that does it for this episode of uh, Popcorn Perspective. Uh, we've got one more for the month of October, and then we will see if we continue this series. If you want me to continue this series here on the Slipper House Extra Extra YouTube channel, then like, subscribe, uh, share this with your pals. And uh, I'll be back next week where we take a look at the final one for October here. The final popcorn perspective for October here. And we'll take a look at... All right, everybody. I'm out of here. Bye. This is where